Welcome everybody to the Road Less Traveled podcast. Welcome back. We have our third guest ever with us, our wedding planner, Jennifer. Thank you so much. It's 7.30 here in Vail, Colorado. And thank you for joining us at the crack of dawn. <laughs> Absolutely. I could not be more excited to be here to get to see you in my hometown after planning your wonderful wedding in Hawaii and just getting to connect for the first time since then. So I thanks know. for having me. And we're still married. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. And another baby. <laughs> and another baby. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's going swimmingly. And you were there for, yeah, the beginning of it all. It was so wonderful. It was. It was. I want to dive into like uh, the the whole process with us. And I think most importantly, like what made you get into wedding planning? For me, it was my first job ever. My first job was in wedding planning. I did not know this. Way back when, right after college. Uh-huh. And I did a few weddings and I was like, whoa, this is hard. <laughs> like this is hard work. First of all, it's weekend work, a lot of weekend work. And secondly, it's Honestly, a lot of like mother of the bride drama. It's crazy way back when. I'm sure you've seen it all. But it was at that point in time in Atlanta, a lot of drama and a lot of weekend work. And I was like, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. (laughs) So kudos to you. Thank you. You can do anything. You are absolutely cut out for it. But, you know, the joy of that job is if I didn't do something that kind of gets me around all these people that I wouldn't meet otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here with you very true um so I think you know this my my background actually I have a biology degree and I was marine biologist for 15 years and Mm -hmm. I worked with whales and dolphins so cool it was it was awesome so cool it was so like I want to dive into that too. it was so fun um and I loved it it was my dream job like especially growing up here everyone's like you can't go work with whales and dolphins you're born and raised in Vail Colorado there's no ocean around yeah um but I landlocked Landlocked was not a big skier. I had a very supportive family who was like, you love the ocean. Like, let's get you certified at 13 and start doing all that. So I did that for 15 years. And and in that uh, vein, I was on the board of directors for the organization that manages all marine mammals in human care. Got it. Um, And so we did all their large scale conferences all over the world. So Mexico, Hawaii, Hong Kong, San Diego. And that kind of gave me like the foray into event planning because you're doing the room blocks and the schedules and the speakers. Um, And then truly the reason I pivoted was after I had my son, I was like, you know what? I'm working every Christmas and every Mother's Day and I only get to do this once. Um, So I looked at moving to Hawaii or moving back home to Vail. And my husband got a great job here. All four of my parents are still here. I have two moms and two dads. And um, we moved back and so I uh, started Gemini event planning, which then became Mono Creative, which is how I met you. And, yes. and here we are. So it's been wonderful. I like to tell people that you have life figured out because you <laughs> you literally go between Vail, Colorado and Maui, Hawaii. I'm very lucky. It's, it's just But the I feel the same way about you. I am so <laughs> impressed with everything you're doing. Earlier in the elevator this morning, I told you, you inspire me and you really do. Like I... I'm so impressed with everything that you've created and the opportunities you've taken and what you've made from those opportunities, Mm -hmm. but still getting to know you and your family through our wedding planning process from your wonderful husband and daughter to your parents who just please give your mom a big hug for me. I will. I will. She's sad she can't be here. I know. Thank you. You'll have to bring him back. Thank you for that. Those words are so sweet. I mean it. And now you're doing it with two kids, which Mm. is, is harder than one kid. It's just, it multiplies. One plus one is nine. So, so true. And you're doing it. You're making it happen. You're here. And I just, I really find a lot of inspiration in that because it's hard balancing work as a working mom and travel going back and forth and you're rocking it. So thank you. You get it. You get it. And you know that you, it, it can't really be done without more helpful hands a hundred percent and support. And that's kind of why you moved back here or yeah. are, are still here. Yeah. And that's why we moved back to Arkansas. I mean, I never said I would move back to Arkansas. I think it was an amazing blessed childhood, but I never thought I'd move back home. Yep. And never say never because here we are. Cool. And my husband was more of a proponent than I was the Australian of all people. <laughs> <laughs> um, And it was just like a, it was a disconnect between the head and the heart, I think. And my head was like, this was never the plan. And my heart was like, you know what you need to do. And it's to move back to be near family with kids on the way and no regrets at all. A hundred percent. It makes all the difference. I often, it was my dad's birthday last week and I was Mm -hmm. like, moving home was the best decision we ever made. Yeah. Even if it's not for forever, not only for us to be able to do what we do, but for our kids to get that time with their grandparents. And then 
I didn't even think about it at the time, but so my parents got divorced when I was young, but I grew up with them getting along, but I only saw my dad every like four days a month. And he was just like, thank you for moving home a couple of years ago. He's like, I've spent more time with your son than I ever got to spend with you oh. growing up. And it was just one of those moments and I've never seen him so happy. And it's just been like my life's greatest gift to be able to do that. You'll so like, never forget that moment. It's just a win-win all around. Mm. So yeah. I'm so lucky I found you and I found <laughs> you from the Ritz Carlton in Maui. And it's so cool. I just love that story so much how how much that place means to us. And then to find you from there, it just builds and builds and builds in, in greatness. And I know you know this story, but for those who don't, um, I first found the Ritz Carlton Kapalua back in 2016 when they invited me on a press trip. And I, I took my story. mom. <laughs> And, um, it was such a fun trip. And on that press trip was a drone pilot named Adam Goldberg. And I was like, cool. I, I don't know any drone pilots. And I remember one morning I got up early just to see him do his thing, fly his drone from the pool area. And then, you know, the trip is over. We left and we stayed in contact here and there. Um, cue me getting a drone and it was broken and I had no idea how to fix it. And the only drone pilot I knew was Adam from Ritz Carlton Kapalua. So I call him and he's like, I'm in Atlanta, but it, if you need somebody and you're in LA, you should message this guy named Alex. And so I slide into Alex's DMs. <laughs> anyway, y'all know that story. Oh, um, it. And it's, it's cool how that has evolved, that that location has evolved for us. It was the first place that we then took Nora um, when she was three months old. And then the place where we got married. Yeah. It's it. come full circle. Well, and, and you looked at a lot of different places to get married. Yes. So it's, I feel very fortunate that it it resulted in what it did because you weighed a lot of different options. You got engaged in COVID, correct? Yes. Or, well, February, right yeah. before the world shut down. Yeah. So you were looking at Argentina. Argentina. We actually hired a wedding yeah. planner in Argentina. And you know when something just becomes so hard? It just yeah, begins like, to not make sense. The resistance is the universe telling me that this isn't the right option. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I think I have to call this off. Yeah. So we called it off That's and hard. it was fine. It, our, Argentina will always be there. And, and, and maybe it was, it's just meant for Alex and I to love. And it was, wasn't meant to bring all our favorite people down that on that day. We looked at Aspen. We looked at Colorado, all over Colorado, Italy, Banff, Mexico, Australia. I mean, we went around the world, the world and back. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was wild, but we had the time because when well, you've seen so many places because of your job. So you've really actually had knowledge of all these other locations. So true. And I think that was the hard part was that you know, our, my I left my heart in so many places around the world. And I am a travel blogger and I also married an Aussie who loves to travel too. Yeah. And you guys so, are meant to be. <laughs> yeah, we were definitely meant to be, but it definitely made nailing down a place hard. And I'll never forget Alex's dad gunning for Hawaii from the get-go, from like the day we got engaged. In, in my mind, I was like, we're not, we're not, we're not getting married in, in Hawaii. <laughs> I vividly remember having a family vacation in Hawaii a long time ago. I mean, I was probably 13, 14 years old and I saw so many brides in one day probably like 10, 11, 12 or more. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is wild. Yeah. It this is like, is insane. Used to have so many weddings. Yeah. And I was like, I, and so that kind of turned me away from that. Yeah. And I always remembered that. And so cue me then swallowing my words and having a beautiful wedding in Maui. Anybody would be so lucky to do that. I mean, it's truly one of the most beautiful places on earth and you get to create there. And I think that's so cool. Speaking of creating, it's an art form, wedding planning. Oh, thank you. And you do it so effortlessly. You create, you help create this blank canvas into something beautiful, which was really hard for me to do. I look back and all I have to think is you and my mom for taking me through that experience that I look back and it was hard. Because it's just not. And we were still in like the post-COVID world too. So like that added a challenge. Yes. But it's hard to create from a blank space because you're like, I don't know what I want my wedding to look like. And I told you this so many times. Yeah. I have no vision. I have no vision. You you do. <laughs> That's why you're in the business you're in. But I guess going back to meeting you and having that first conversation, 
I think I was pretty honest and I was like, I know what I don't want, <laughs> but I'm not sure what I want. Was I a hard client? Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, you're, you know, we're really fortunate in that, like, through all these years of experience on kind of those exploratory phone calls, we can tell the clients that we're going to connect with or not. And not everybody is the right fit for every planner. So when we do find the people we connect with, like, on the first call, I was like, oh, I want to work with you and your mom so bad. Like, let, let's make this happen. Yeah. And absolutely not a hard client at all. But it is a lot of exploration because there are so many options. And I think – you know, when people are starting wedding planning, it feels overwhelming because that to-do list is so big. But it's you don't have to tackle everything at once. It's about starting on the priorities and the big things. And then, like, that's why you have your planner to kind of, like, create that timeline over the year of what you need to focus on. It's like, let's just do three or four things right now. And then we'll circle back after those three or four yes. things are done. And then because I can't do what you do, you know, like, everyone has different talents. So I can be like, here are some examples of ways we can start designing. And then it just kind of, like, keeps – the road keeps forking and it leads down into the direction that we're going, but you don't have to know the end goal. You're just starting on that journey together. That takes a ton of patience Well, from you. I used to be an animal <laughs> trainer, so I guess it, that, that helps. I don't know. That's true. <laughs> That's amazing. I used to be an animal trainer. Patience required. Um, but also there's so many great vendors in Hawaii. And I think part of being a planner is knowing who are great vendors and and who maybe to, to avoid working with. And, and Instagram doesn't always mean like, that's the person because I think a lot it has to be said for people who have like experience in that location or in that style or in that like tier of luxury. Um, so we can share all these different visions and you can be like, I like this one. I don't like that one. And then, and then we go from there. How did you find Maui as one of your main stays in loc destination weddings? That's a great question. So being here from Vail and knowing Vail really well and starting, you know, Gemini event planning kind of here and growing that, then knowing I always wanted to work in, in Hawaii, specifically Maui, just because growing up, like, I used to go there a lot. I'm a dive master. Like, I love Hawaii. One day we want to get back there. And so in COVID, I had the time to start that second business, which I wouldn't have normally had that time. Um, but really, a lot of the credit goes to you because you trusted me, a Colorado planner, to plan your Hawaii wedding. And and that was huge. So that was a lot of my gratitude to the Ritz Carlton and to you for like taking that chance on me. And um, and I just knew it was a place that we wanted to be eventually. And so kind of spending the time out there. And you know, Hawaii is a unique culture, which is why I love it so much. But like you have to treat people the way you want to be treated. You mm -hmm. can't come in with like your time schedule or the way that you talk to people that maybe you would in different parts of the country. You just have to be respectful. And I think spending time there really helped that. And so I feel very fortunate that I feel supported by that community and a lot of the vendors there. And that has like honestly made all the difference. You knew how to navigate it. Mm -hmm. um, and a hurdle we had was it's at the end of the day, it's, it's a little Island. Yeah. And there's only so much on it. Yeah. It's far away from everything else. And it, yeah. And so I was like, I want these chairs. You're like, mm, sorry, they're not available. <laughs> I was like, but these are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think I, I I didn't realize that in the beginning. You, you can't always get what you want on a on a small island. They have plenty, they but there might plenty. be things you didn't know you wanted. Hundred percent, because there were some amazing like custom rentals we found. That well, and I think it was a lot of the post COVID post COVID wedding boom. Mm -hmm. So much was already reserved, mm -hmm. right? Like we we came in probably. Is that March and said, okay, we're getting married October 14th. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So it was a quick time, time frame for sure. And, and then a more compressed schedule because of that post COVID boom for sure. Um, but I think we got like the best vendor team out there. And, oh my gosh. And you know, you getting to know like Asa, your florist oh. and then like on the day of getting to see him. And I mean, I was at a wedding with Chris Evans and Hannah a couple of weeks ago yes. and we just like relive your wedding whenever we see each other. We're like, Oh, don't you just like love Leslie and Kevin. That was uh. the best day. We just want to do it again. And <gasps> I, if you can't see me, I can't wipe the <laughs> smile off my face because it's so fun to relive. It's so fun. if I could live in that moment yeah. forever, I would. I mean, under the starry sky with all your favorite people. Um, and it, it took a lot to get to that moment. But the reason we wanted to do it instead of, you know, an elopement was because it really is going to be the only time all those people are under the same sky. Yeah. Being from Australia. And Arkansas and all over the U.S. really. So it really was so special. Speaking of vendors and knowing that 
gosh, Maui, Lahaina, especially was just decimated by the wildfires in was August of 2023. Uh-huh. God, how, what's it like being back and seeing your friends and those vendors and how are they doing and, and moving forward? That's a, a great question. And thank you for asking that. And, um, you know, the second I heard about it, I immediately called, uh, your videographer and your florist. Those are the yep. first two phone calls I made to make sure that they were okay. And shout out to our friend Wes. Yep. He is such a great videographer and Asa flowers. Yep. Asa, we love you. We love you guys. Yeah. And even at that moment, I didn't realize the extent of the devastation until it kept unfolding over the days. And then it was so hard to not be able to like be there and help and make a change. Sure. Like I wasn't able to get there until November and seeing it for the first time, like you just, you know, pull over and cry on the side of the road. There, I don't know if for anyone listening who's familiar with Maui, you used to be able to drive um, straight through Highway 30 um, until a couple of years ago, they put a, a bypass up. So you actually are above Lahaina town looking down. And so now when you do that, you, could, you can really clearly see oh. like everything that's happened. And then there's the flags, the Hawaiian flags on the side of the road and mm. the crosses. And it just, it feels very heavy, of, of course. And, and then when you're driving, you know, you come off that bypass and you're driving towards Kapalua or up towards Napili, they have a lot of what happened kind of blocked off by like a black tarp, but it's only about like 10 feet high. So you're still seeing like the palm trees and the top of the houses that, you know, just, it's just the, the shells of those. And then all of our friends who are still living in, you know, Airbnbs or other condo hotel properties. Um, and it was, you know, it was devastating and, and you just want to help as much as you can, but yeah. there isn't really, you know, other than donating and yeah. sending supplies. And so, you know, so many people really came together and wanted to help do that, but which charity donate to? There's so many popping up. Like yes. that was really hard. And so what I think transformed is, you know, our first big wedding there, we had one in Lanai in November, but then a really big one at the Ritz in January. And what was kind of magical about that wedding is everyone was just so grateful to be there, Obviously, the clients and their guests, but also the people who work at the hotel. They were like, thank you for bringing this event here. Thank you for getting us back to work. Like we want this normalcy. We are so excited to see happy people celebrating. We are so excited to have the work and, and we want to be able to focus on something positive mm. and not just keep, you know, everyone's getting through the healing from the fire and then what they need to do. We know so many people, even at the Ritz, a lot of staff there who lost their houses and yeah. everything completely. Ugh. Um, and so while everyone's navigating that, I think that there's something to be said for, the joy that a wedding brings mm. and then the normalcy that it brings for the yeah. people who are part of it. The vendors were so grateful to be part of it. I was just, it just meant so much to me. And that's a great way to support the island because everyone's like, what can we do? And bringing an event there is a great way to support it. Great way. Because it's not just you vacationing there. It's you're bringing all your guests and they're going on the sunset sales and they're eating in the restaurants. Well, tourism is such a, a massive industry there. And like you said, um, it's important to be so respectful when you go there. And I think when they, when the wildfires just started, all of this cor correspondence was coming out of, of the island saying, don't come here. Yeah. And so that was really confusing. And then it turned kind of on a, on its head a couple days later, if not the next day. And it was like, wait, just kidding. Like, please, please come here. Like we need you in your business, you know, in a, if in a respectful manner. And so Absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head when Yes, bring your events there. Travel there. Um, With think, the spirit of like Ohana and yes, love and respect. Like yes. it's one of the best things that you can do to help <sighs> island recover. But thank you for saying that. That actually brings up a really special point is, you know, what immediately happened, I think there are a lot of celebrities with all the best intentions saying like, don't go to Maui. But what happened was that just set off a snowball effect where everyone started canceling their weddings, moving to other islands. And as, as truly obviously awful and devastating as that fire is, it is localized to Lahaina. Yep. So even Kapalua, which is maybe 10 minutes away, completely unaffected. Like beaches there unaffected. Um, Kihei, Waialea, Hana, Paia, like the rest of the island, like there's a whole island there that I wish people had just pivoted to another venue. Sure. Um, and honestly, there are no wedding venues in Lahaina. So it was more just like, if if you didn't feel comfortable staying near Kanapali, like go to another venue because that really hurt the community. Yep. And not just in weddings, like the people in who work in hotels, 
in the restaurants, everything. Um, and so there are a lot of options still for, for weddings and events and vacations and honeymoons and baby moons and everything oh, outside yes. of Lahaina while Lahaina works to rebuild. Cause that's going to be a process. Yeah. It's going to take years I think, yeah. to rebuild. I would absolutely love to go back this year, do whatever. I don't, I don't know yet what we can do, but do whatever we can. Yeah. I mean, we really got married 10 minutes away from there. You're right. And, and I remember after the wedding, we went to Lahaina and got, you know, Christmas ornaments and that little shop isn't there anymore. Uh, the day before the wedding, I will never forget. You go, how's your, you got your marriage license, right? You got your marriage license, right? (laughs) (gasps) Panic bells like (laughs) went off in full force, completely forgot the marriage license. And we called the, um, marriage license office in Lahaina. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you need to be here in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave the office soon. And Alex and I get a a friend had a rental car. We hopped in their car. They took us down there and we got a marriage license. Sadly, I, I, I don't think that's there anymore. Um, but, and it'll take a long time to rebuild. So, um, it is the banyan tree still there. The banyan tree is still there. There's actually some really great images on social media of how it's actually healing and coming back. And I just saw one last week that there's greenery there, which is just, you know, this amazing analogy for like the people of Hawaii and Lahaina who are like, they are still blooming and going forward and not giving up. And like the tree amazingly somehow survived that. It's incredible. I don't, I don't even know. I don't know enough about trees to explain how that happened. But <laughs> I mean, it's no, you're right though. It's like the symbol of life. Like yeah. it rebuilding can happen and it yeah. will happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, still working through like the oceans and like Malapir being gone and, and the cleanest, but I mean, I've been there five times since the fire. And other than when I drive through Lahaina, you know, on like the, the five minutes of going, everything else on the Island seems, you know, as normal and yeah. And, um, it's wonderful to see people so supportive of the island. Well, I have no regrets. I, I love Maui. I love Kapalua so much, but I remember right when we met and I was going through your social media, I was looking at all your photos and going between, I was seeing these beautiful images of images of Maui, but also these beautiful images of the mountain and Vail and Aspen and everywhere you do weddings here in Colorado. And I turned to Alex and I was like, Bullshit. Should we just get married in Colorado? Because <laughs> this is stunning. I am, if if I had to choose, my heart belongs in the mountains and he's a beach boy. I remember you telling me that. <laughs> and maybe we'll get you here one day. I That'd know. We just, we just love it all. We just love it all. Um, maybe in my next life, I'll be so lucky to meet you and do it this way. Oh, we're connected. Yeah, not going anywhere. <laughs> I wish y'all could see what we see. This view is stunning with all the aspen trees, the slopes here. It's our last day. We're about to actually get on a plane and go home. So the fact that you call this place home is pretty amazing. Thank you. I feel very fortunate. Um, I I really want to dive into like really fun stories. I don't know how much you can share, how much yeah, you want to share. Yeah. I want to know like, well, first and foremost, I guess, have you noticed since since you got into the wedding industry to present day, what is what's how has the cost of weddings kind of evolved? That's a really good question. I was just I think for me growing up here, like Vale has evolved a lot from, you know, when I was born here. And it is now more of a luxury market than it was like when I was younger here, Aspen was a luxury market and Vale was more like, you know, Crested Butte and yep. like a little more local. And now it's it's on par, I feel like with Aspen, I know that people will disagree with that statement, but like, you know what I'm saying as far <laughs> yeah. as like, it is, it is a lot more developed. I hear, you. I hear you. Um, and so, but what really changed, and I think you probably feel it as a traveler. And I, I try to travel a lot personally with my family and I'm feeling it there is, is the cost of weddings, like post COVID, especially. So while mm-hmm. wedding costs obviously have gone up, they really didn't have like a significant impact until COVID because we lost that year. And so then everything Backed up year, the demand soared. People oh. started like charging more. Venues started charging more because they can. And and I was like, when is this going to go back to a little bit normal? I know you felt that when oh we were paying God. your wedding. It was like this. Astronomical. Are, yeah, absolutely. Um, and fortunately, Hawaii is, I, I think, significantly less expensive than Vail because as remote as the island is, it has more resources being a bigger island. Because here in Vail, there's like a handful of planner and makeup artists and photographers, but everything else, like 
comes from Denver or beyond. You know, it's it's a two hour drive over a snowy mountain pass that That's can close. Wild. Yeah. That's wild to hear you say that. So do you think it's a misconception that destination weddings are more expensive? Yes. I think it's very much just on dependent upon the location and the demand in that location and the the venues. The reason that Vail and Aspen and the, all these towns are so expensive is unlike Hawaii, California, Florida, where you can do weddings all year long here, it's like mid June to the end of September. Yep. There's like 14 prime weekends. There's a limited amount of venues because those you want to come here to get married outside. And while we do winter weddings, it's maybe one or two over the whole nine months of winter versus like, you know, every weekend will be booked for every venue from June through September. Wow. Okay. So your busy seasons, June from September, but then will you then go to Hawaii? And so it's kind of like busy season after busy season. Yes. But I, I, I'm like selective with what, where we work in Hawaii and how much we do knowing that like, this is kind of the main market. Sure. So it's, it's more like maybe one every other month versus here. It's like two or three a month in summer. Like so. I said, you got life figured out. <laughs> <laughs> just, we'll just keep, take me with you. Keep giving advice to each time. other. We'll figure it out together. Um, um, okay. So, so for a rain plan, rain plan. does That's it make you cringe when, when your client's like, yeah, you know, we don't need a tent. We have an outdoor wedding, but we'll forego the tent. That's kind of how we work. I have such a good story for you. <laughs> okay, great. I don't know if you remember this about your wedding. So tell me if I told you. I know what you're about. Okay, to say. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in Colorado, you have to have a tent. There's not really an option. Um, it gets chilly at night and and everything just requires a tent. So I know in like California, Florida, Hawaii, you can do kind of an alfresco dinner, which is what we did for your wedding. Yes. Beautiful Kapalua. Um, talking, you know, earlier you were saying how you see brides everywhere sometimes in Maui when you're younger. That's one of the reasons I like that Ritz is it's on its own. It's private. Yes. It's the most private beach spot where your oceanfront, you don't even see the people down at the Could beach. not agree more. Everywhere else on the island, because beaches are public in Hawaii, you see everyone everywhere. Yep. So so going forward from that, um, so we're like, okay, it's October. It's not the rainy season. We got this. We have this beautiful wedding, beautiful <laughs> night. Then it, you guys are dancing. Like I'm just basking in the like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that my friend is happy and this all went so great. <laughs> and then I'm standing there with your event manager um, at the Ritz and all of a sudden we feel this like breeze and it gets like kind of breezy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and more than just like that light, nice Hawaiian breeze. Sure. And we look at each other and we're like, okay. What's, what's about to happen? So we run up to the hotel because the beach lawn is a couple hundred yards from the hotel. So we run up in the golf cart and we mobilize all the shuttles, like every shuttle that brought your guests down. So we're like ready for what's about to happen. And on that golf drive up to your hotel, it starts dumping rain, not like raining and sprinkling like a nice wine. It is like a wall of dumping rain. And we are like, okay, we are going to have to like quickly get everyone on these shuttles and inside and finish the reception inside. And I mean, we had about an hour left, so this is towards the tail end, but it was just so unusual that it was just like, you're driving up the path, dry, dry, dry rain. Um, and you might've seen that when you're looking at the ocean, you can like see the wall of rain coming. Sure. Sure. I know. Well, I know what you mean, but this was Completely unbeknownst to us. Yeah. Like, I didn't know this at the time. I was not going to tell you until I had to tell you. <laughs> and that's why you have a wedding planner. Yes. So we're like, mo so we get all the shuttles. We're, we're literally right behind your band stage. Like, you guys can't see us because we're behind the, like, the band backdrop. But yep. we're, like, ready for the rain to start and to sh usher you guys all in there. And it just never came. It never came. So, like, 100 feet from where you guys were dancing, there is a wall of rain that rained for like 15 minutes and then passed. It, it makes me want to cry. And I remember when you first told me the story the day after, <laughs> because it's like somebody was looking out for yeah. us. Like it's yeah. crazy how like it was pouring rain at the hotel and to paint the picture for y'all, if, if you've never, you know, seen this resort, there's, um, you know, where all the hotel rooms are pretty, pretty massive resort, beautiful pool area. And then kind of this long, pathway down to the beach area and the wedding lawn. And so it is, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a walk. Yeah. And that's what makes it great. It's this beautiful expansive oh property. You're and and like truly a blank resort. canvas to work with. Yeah. And this, this lawn is gorgeous grass. You can do anything with it and steps away is this beach. And there are no private beaches, like you said, in Hawaii and Maui. Yeah. And, and but it all feels like that yeah, because it's it, below. It feels like it belongs to the Ritz. Yeah. Um, and so that's definitely a perk to have it there. But it's just wild. And I'll never forget 
I never, we never left the dance floor that night because it was so fun. The band was amazing. Shout, Shout out, out to Jordan Kahn. Yes. Jordan the band. They were awesome. Oh my God. Jordan Kahn orchestra, like book them, but please for your next wedding. They made it like they made it, it so fun. So Corey. It was their first Hawaiian wedding, I think, too. Really? It was for you. So yeah, oh, it was so cool. It was just the best. Um, never left the dance floor except for one time when it just started ever so slightly sprinkling. Mm-hmm. And I looked at Alex and I was like, my anxiety mm-hmm. shot through the roof. Mm-hmm. And I was like, let's go take photos in the van because we had this like 1970s photo booth van there that was so fun. And we, I was in the van while it was sprinkling. And by the time we got out, taking pictures of the, in the van, it was done. Yeah. We went straight back to the dance floor and anxiety was gone. But I had no idea. It was pouring rain like feet away. Yeah. It was wow. It was something I'll never forget for sure. And, you know, I'm doing this for eight years. I've never had that experience happen. And I, I am just such a big believer in like karma and great things happening to great people. Not saying that when it does rain on someone's wedding, wedding day, unfortunately, that they're not great people. But right. I mean, just everything you guys had gone through to get there – from all the rescheduling you had done. And like, to be honest, like when you're planning with a baby, you were also doing that. You were working and planning with a newborn. Like yes. it, that was, it was a lot. Hard. It was like three jobs, mom, businesswoman, planning a wedding. I will always say wedding planning is a full-time job. Like, yes, I, I also will say my number one piece of advice is to get a wedding planner. Well, thank you. Um, and it is, yes, it's another cost, but it is, it's the best cost you'll ever make. Um, because it, (laughs) I can't imagine doing that without you. Um, it would have been 10 times the amount of work. Um, There's just a lot that if you don't do it all the time, you, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. And you don't get to repeat it and learn from it. You get one day to do it. So true. That's, that's the quote of the century. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you you don't want to have any regrets that hopefully you just do it once and do it well. And that's why Chris and I just relive through your photos all the time. Oh, "Oh, we missed them. Can we just look at these again? I would love to. That's why we keep reposting all your photos. It was the best. They're so good. (laughs) But yeah, it was, it was quite the day. So any other situations where it's just rained without a tent? You know, we've been really lucky. Um, we have not, I mean, honestly, people are always like, how do you, how are you a wedding planner? It's so stressful and all these things. I'm like, honestly, the worst thing that's going to happen on your wedding day is rain. That's like the worst thing that's going to happen. And that's why you have a planner because they have a plan B, a plan C, yes, a plan D. So we're always there, like not wanting to stress you out and anything, but have everything ready to go. Um, and in Colorado, we always do have a tent. Um, and usually when it does rain, it like blows through quickly. So yeah. we always encourage our clients, you know, rent some clear umbrellas. And if we have to dance <laughs> with umbrellas for a couple of minutes, we I will. know. And that's, you told and me that too. Through. You're like, just get on Amazon and order a bunch of clear umbrellas. And I'm like, and we'll return them if we don't use them. I'm like, that's great advice, but nah, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do it. We didn't do it. Um, it was just like another thing to bring to Hawaii. And we brought nine, I think we brought 10 bags to Hawaii. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah it was amazing. Pulled up, I was like, wow, that is impressive. So fun to relive this. Gosh. <sighs> it was so great. Other good advice. Yes. Don't look at those weather apps. I, because of what I do, especially here in the summer in the mountains, I have like five different apps that I'll watch all day long on wedding days and they all say something different at a different time. So I just watch the radar and I don't want anyone else to be worrying watching the radar and like knowing these places, I, I can read the radar pretty well. And so I'm like, you know what? It's going to sprinkle for 15 minutes. Let's get out those umbrellas or let's postpone the ceremony and you have a drink and then we'll do it while we dry off. You know, we'll dry off the chairs while you have a drink and then we'll do the ceremony. Um, so that kind of helps keep the anxiety. That's great advice. Too. Cause I just have, you know, your most basic weather app that tells me really nothing, nothing. but rain or shine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is this really cool guy I met. I will have to send it to you. I met him at a conference where he actually has like, he pays for access to the national weather database, yep. which I guess is very accurate and yeah. can predict weather like weeks out. And it's different than all these apps. And you can hire him for your wedding for like $2,500. No I, I wish I'd known this before your wedding. So sorry. I haven't met no. him since. Wait, um, that's his amazing. His specific job is just to watch the weather so people can decide two weeks out if they like need a tent or not. That's or rain wild. Planning. Isn't that? That's his whole niche. No way. Okay. Speaking of really interesting niches in the wedding industry, I feel like I was on the forefront of this trend of hiring a content creator Yes, for the wedding day. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd never really seen that done. And and it was like a week before the wedding. And I was like, I really want this. And by no means were was she supposed to ever replace the photographer or the videographer. She was just She's getting, getting quick, different moments. Yeah. Different yeah. moment, quick off the cuff moments. Uh, and 
it was one of the best decisions I made because we'll always have those as well as yeah. the professional shots. But I feel like that's only becoming bigger yeah. and bigger to hire a content creator for your wedding day. Have you seen more of that? I am just starting to now. And I agree. You were the first that I saw. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it is actually becoming more and more common now because people want, you know, usually to take that like great video we get, it takes like three to four months to get a yes, really good one. For sure. And then, you know, photo comes out a little bit quicker, but there's something about video and you might feel this more now that you're a mom too, because I didn't realize it till I became a mom. There's something about video and like hearing people's voices and like how it captures emotion and moments mm. that is just different than photo. Photo is so important, obviously. Yes. But it's just, I didn't realize how important video was. It's the movement yeah. and the voices and it yeah. brings back those memories fourfold, uh, yeah. tenfold, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and they're completely different moments. So like while you're getting like the professional edited like video and the amazing photos of like, you know, the perfection, it's fun to see like those authentic things that maybe wouldn't make it into the final cut. Yes. And, and it's also there for like that, you know, that first month when you're waiting for everything else to come in, you can like relive that. And I think I, I, I have no advice for who to even hire for y'all. If you're even looking I'll, for somebody, I'll, I'll send some that. You okay. Can. I'm sure, you know, way more than I do, but, um, it's kind of just starting. It's just yeah. starting and there aren't too many people in it. And I was really lucky because somebody, a follower of mine, I, I think I just sent something over the airwaves on Instagram. I was like, do y'all know anybody in Maui who can do this? And a follower uh, gave me a name of somebody and she is like you in between Colorado and Maui. Really? Yes. That's so neat. Um, and uh, just so happened to be in Maui at the time. Well, and isn't so, that cool about yeah. social media? Like, yeah. I love how it does connect people and gives you the opportunity to meet people all over the world. And like, it's just amazing that we live in this world of technology now that connects everybody, especially I like agree. image sharing, because I feel like you can just there's so much story that comes with a photo. And so like, mm-hmm. I always love watching yours because I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh, I want to travel there and yeah. go there. And it's, it's just neat to see, um, everyone living like their best lives. Yeah. It's pretty great. I think pros and cons to social media, but the, the pros outweigh the, yeah. the, the good outweighs the bad any day. Yeah. 2024 wedding trends. <laughs> What are we thinking? So, um, one of the things I love about Hawaii is that the weddings are usually smaller and, and like yours was pretty big. Yours was almost 100 people. That's big to yeah. me for Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and then right after COVID, we thought micro weddings were going to become a thing. But now I'm seeing like weddings in general get a little less large, over the top. And I I love that trend. Like I got married with 30 people. I just think there's an, an amazing wedding and a luxury wedding doesn't mean it has to be big and over the top. I think you can pay attention to more of the details. Everyone in the seat, everyone has a great seat in the house. Like at your wedding, we had that cool U table. So yes. everyone, you know, when you're doing your first dance, like there was a great seat for everybody there. Yes. And I, th- I think that's going to come up a little bit in 2024. I think the cost of everything, like we were talking about, mm. people are just saying, okay, what, what is really important to me? It doesn't have to be these over the top, you know, Instagram images. And I think that that's kind of going to come online a little bit too. Well, there's just so much pressure. There's so much pressure when you're planning a wedding to have everything it's perfect, so everything over the top. Yeah. And it really doesn't have to be that way. Because no one's going to remember the napkin fold except like you and me who talked no. about like six options, you know? <laughs> but like, <laughs> <laughs> no, so true. <laughs> or, or really the menus. Yeah. I mean, I got on, you know, a few weeks before the wedding, just perusing, you know, the interwebs and saw all these really cool plantable menu cards that I loved. And well, they so are became, really cool to your credit. Yeah. So it became the, the, the dinner menu at the wedding. Yeah. Um, and I think people stress about every single last detail and it doesn't have to be like over the top yeah. by any means. Well, I think that's what makes weddings great is you can customize like your wedding should never be like anybody else's. It's all just right. inspiration. Right. Um, and so that's what a great planner does is like gets to know, you know, you and Cav and, or the couple and, yep. and create it unique to you. But I think that in all those details, you don't have, to, you know, you have to make a decision on all of them, but you don't have to overanalyze each one. If yep. that makes it like choose like kind of what's more important. I think a great wedding is going to be about how it makes you feel mm. less than, like all the little details of how it looks. And so I think that comes into like where you are, which is why destination weddings are so great because everyone's going to remember that amazing weekend in Hawaii or that amazing weekend in Vail because you're you're getting all your favorite people together. And you touched on that earlier, but I just celebrated my 10-year wedding anniversary Mm -hmm. and I cannot even get a third of those people back together for a weekend. Like it's just so hard. And that's what's so cool about weddings is 
you get all your favorite people together in a place that you love. So where it is, I think the food matters. I think people remember if it's great or not great wedding food. And I think the music, like you said, like it just, those are things that just help you feel your wedding. And then all the other details are beautiful and important, but people just don't have to lose sleep over them. And when in doubt, be like, you know, ask your planner to give you like two options and you just pick A or B. Exactly. And I think, I think every bride's different, every couple's different, but for us, our, um, our biggest items that were most important were band, open bar and food. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's the recipe of a good time. A hundred percent. That is just a great party, my friend. Oh God. There's this so moment good. where Cav like picked you up on the dance floor. Do you remember and like spun you during yes, your first dance? And course. I will just like always oh, remember that. I want to relive. I want to live in that moment forever. Do you ever go into the year with any goals? Like, uh, how do you have like how many weddings you want to do in a year, a location you really want to go to, bigger presence on social media. Did you have any of those goals for 2024? You know, if someone had told me like 15 years ago that I was going to be a wedding planner in Hawaii and Colorado, I would have like laughed and been like, no, I'm a biologist. This makes no sense. (laughs) And so I remember when I was a biologist and I would always interview for promotion there, I was like, where are you going to be in five years? What are your goals? And it was such a hard question to answer. And so, and then this evolved in my life, just Mm -hmm. like organically from opportunities and then just like hard work ethic, applying the same work ethic to my past job that I do to my current career. And so I kind of stopped like trying to set those goals because I feel like opportunities naturally arise. And then I just try to work hard to make those opportunities count much, much like you do. Yep. Um, So while small things like, oh, it'd be great to work here, um, but I'm never like trying to I don't need to be like the biggest planner in the world. I don't, and honestly, I don't want to work all over the world. So I'm different than a lot yeah. of destination planners. People who are like, no, that's what I do. I'm a destination planner or this is what I do. I'm a Colorado planner. Like I just work in that niche, like Colorado and Hawaii. And I love it because I know those two like communities and cultures. And I think that's where the success comes from. And I have people who are like, will you plan a wedding in New York or Mexico? And, and honestly, there's probably people who can do that better than me because they mm. know it better than, than me. And there's certain weekends I just never work because of my family. So yeah. I instead of like the number, I'm just like, no, I'll just never work Father's Day. I'll I'll never work Fourth of July. I think that is so important to have those boundaries. Because and, it's, and a it's lot funny. of people don't. Yeah. They'll say yes to anything um, at the expense of their energy levels, their family, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's huge to say that and to acknowledge that and to to realize those boundaries for sure. Yeah. I think it's important. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's hard sometimes. Someone's like, oh, this is my wedding. And you're like, I just have to be like, nope, not even going to entertain it. I'm going to refer you to somebody wonderful. Yeah. Because I think that's the key to being able to not burn out also in this world where we go so fast. And you're super accessible in this job, like through text, email, cell, Instagram, 5 a.m., 1030 at night. Like you just have to be able to be like, I just need this weekend off. And otherwise I, people are going to burn out and, and all the things they do. Everyone's working so hard in our culture. So true. I think that's a, it's a very important point. You're so accessible to all of your brides, all of your couples at all hours of the day. And so boundaries, again, so important. <laughs> <laughs> for For anybody who's about to get engaged or recently engaged, what would you tell, like, what would you tell them if, if somebody, if they're so overwhelmed on where to start with the wedding process? Not, not just because I am a planner. I would say, say reach say out it. to a planner <laughs> yes, because I, I have so many people who are like, I know I want to get married in Colorado, but I have no idea what venue to start at. And without a planner, you're just going to be filling out like all these forms online randomly and getting like random proposals back you can't interpret. So just even if it's not a planner you're going to work with, like hire someone to help you find your venue. Because once you have your venue and your date, everything gets easier. But that's the hardest part. Hardest part. And I can attest to that. Yeah. I yeah, mean, 100%. We were engaged February 4th of 2020, about a month before the world shut down. So here we were doing a little bit of research before that even happened and kind of going to see some um, some places around LA. And that was hard by ourselves. Yeah. And I was like, we we definitely need a wedding planner. And I will never forget we found one. We talked to one a, a few times over the phone. Felt really good about it. The world shuts down the day we're supposed to sign the contract, oh. and I we don't sign it. 
and here we are. Like here we are. Uh, life went in a completely different direction. We found you, went to Hawaii, so and uh, the rest is history. And the rest is history, yes. my friend. Thank you. You're so welcome. I I think you need to go back there for your anniversary, or I think so too. To bring bring your new beautiful baby and show her your favorite place, and because it's always going to be your special place. And that's it the cool will. thing about where you get married. It'll always be that place that you guys can relive and remember. Yeah, I think Lily needs to see it this year for sure. So hopefully we'll get down there. Yes. Uh, thank you for being here, thank you for, for planning our dream wedding, and for continuing to just be a great friend. I love you. I'm so grateful mm-hmm. for our friendship. That's, to me, <laughs> the best part about weddings and why I never burn out is when you meet awesome people, you're mm-hmm. just like, now I get to be connected with you for life. Uh, so thank you. Everybody, if you're if you're looking to get married in Colorado or Maui, definitely look at Jennifer. She's the best. We love, love you. My love you too. Okay. Bye. Safe travels. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>